So in this example, we're going to try to find the Fourier transform of e to the power j omega naught t, the so-called complex exponential. Now this is not a straightforward Fourier transform. So normally what we would try to do would be to apply the definition of the Fourier transform, which is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of t e to the minus j omega t dt. So this is the definition of the Fourier transform. And we would then replace f of t with e to the j omega naught t and that would give us something that looked like this e to the j omega naught t and we can combine those two powers but the problem we would have is with the negative infinity limit you can try the integration and once you get to substituting the limits, you'll have e to the power minus minus infinity, which is infinite, and it won't, it won't give us um, a solution, basically. So we, we won't end up with the Fourier transform. So that isn't going to help us. So what we're going to do instead is a little bit of manipulation. There's two ways of doing this. We can either use the duality property of the Fourier transform. If you happen to know the relevant um, Fourier pair, or in this case, in this video, I'm going to try using the sifting property. But this isn't a property of the Fourier transform. It's the property of um, the uh, Dirac function. So in this video, we'll be using the sifting property. So if we rewrite the Fourier transform as an inverse Fourier transform, say f of t equals one over two pi integral minus infinity to infinity f of omega e to the j omega t d omega. Remember, we're integrating over omega because what we're trying to find is the time domain function. So what I've just drawn is the definition of the inverse Fourier transform. Now, if you look carefully at this, f of t, we actually know. So I can rewrite f of t as e to the j omega naught t, because that's the function that we started with. We know it, f of t. Now, looking closely at this, we notice that, sorry, this term looks awfully similar to that. In fact, all that's happened is that omega has been replaced with omega naught. And that reminds us of, this, reminds us of the sifting property that we mentioned earlier. Of the unit impulse or the Dirac function. So the sifting property states that if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity x, in this case I'm going to use omega times an impulse at omega and we integrate 
over the variable omega, then the answer is going to be x of omega naught. So omega naught, omega naught, that's the value that makes the impulse non-zero. So omega equals omega naught. And that's what we substitute in there. That's the sifting property. We covered this several weeks ago. Now, if we apply that here, we can guess that f of omega will in fact be 2 pi times a unit impulse at omega naught. Because if we then multiply that by e to the j omega t and integrate over all frequency, and then put the 1 over 2 pi, that conveniently gives us, if you look at that, sifting property omega equals omega naught, substitute that in there, that will give us e to the j omega naught t. And remember, that's the function that we started with. That was the question we were trying to answer. The question is, what is the Fourier transform of e to the j omega naught t? So the answer we've arrived at is the function must have been, or the Fourier transform must be, in this case, two pi times a unit impulse at omega naught. So if we want to sketch that, it'll look something like this. So that's the Fourier transform of a complex exponential e to the power j omega naught t. So let me just highlight that for you. That there is our final answer.